Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Washington. Last week in Portugal, a general strike took place against austerity measures and high unemployment. On March 29th, there will be a general strike in Spain on the same issues. Unemployment generally in Spain, the official rate around 23 percent, young people at over 49 percent unemployment, and the government is introducing new labor laws which unions say will even further restrict workers' rights to organize as well as undercut their existing benefits and working conditions. Now joining us to talk about the strike movement in Portugal and Spain is Francisco Lossa. He's a professor of economics at the Higher Institute of Economics and Management in Lisbon. He belongs to the Technical University of Lisbon. He's a member of the Portuguese Parliament since 1999. He's the author of many books and scientific articles on economic thought. And he comes to us now from the Perry Institute in Amherst, Massachusetts. Thanks for joining us, Francisco. Thank you, Paul. So what's, what's driving this upsurge in popular resistance in Portugal and Spain? The, 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 the austerity measures themselves are not new. Why this in, increased resistance? Well, no, they are not new, but uh, the dimension of the crisis, that's new. Um, you said 23% uh, of unemployment in Spain, it's certainly true, although uh, the real uh, unemployment will be much larger if you consider the number of uh, workers who do not have any social benefits at all, who are not anymore inscribed in the, in the centers for, for employment. And that happens in Portugal as well. And that's uh, not uh, an event from a uh, crisis coming from, from Mars. Uh, that's the real consequence of uh, a deliberate policy uh, in order to destroy employment, to lower wages, because the liberal governments believe uh, that if the wage is very low, then there will be investment and then there will be new jobs. But of course, as the, the, the unemployment uh, is increasing, um, there is no investment at all. There is no public investment, there is no private investment, and the consequence is that we have both unemployment and uh, the paralysis of the economy. And that's the reason for the, 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 the conflict in Portugal and, and, and Spain, uh, to fight for an, uh, for an economy for, for the people, for, uh, for, for jobs and for um, a reaction against austerity. That's the popular feeling. That's why these uh, general movements are so important. Now, you, you say a deliberate policy. What is in the brains of these uh, bankers and political elites in the sense that they're obviously destroying their own markets? Uh, even for the Germans, the peripheral countries were sort of their primary export markets and they're, they're, these countries aren't going to be able to buy German products when you have such high unemployment. And they, but they believe in this catharsis, this sort of creative, creative destruction or something. What, what's, what is their end game here? They, they have to realize that this is a decade of recession they're giving rise to. Well, you know, even creative destruction cannot be applied because poor Schumpeter thought that uh, creation was the dynamics of capitalism. Here we have just destruction. And the destruction is indeed uh, not only because of the, there is a dislocation in the economy, there is a transfer of, of, uh, of uh, wealth uh, from, the, the la from labor uh, to, to capital because of the increase of the rate of profitability, the lowering of the wages and all that. Indeed, what's happening is that the IMF intervening in Greece or Portugal or Ireland and uh, the general austerity plans in Spain, but th that, that will be the case in Italy, that will be the case in France, and it's certainly the case in Germany, um, impose the idea that uh, um, uh, if the economy uh, is based on very low wages, we have a new social regime. And the new social regime is the end of the social contract as such working with no rights, 
working with no guarantees, with no protection, with no health uh, system, which is so important in Europe since the last world war, uh, working with no public education for the kids. So it's a, a change of the function of the democratic and socially controlled uh, working of the state as such. We pay taxes and we don't have representation, we don't have devolution, we don't have um, the social welfare system, which was the basis of uh, the, the common life uh, uh, in Europe and in so many countries. So th that's changing the regime. It's an enormous operation of uh, changing the basis of functioning of the economies and the society as such. So I assume the argument that at least they would give in private, if not in public, and to some extent in the business pages you see this in public, but the European elite will argue this is what they have to do be, to be competitive. American wages are going down. Um, certainly the other places where uh, you have expanding economies and production, Brazil and Asia, China and such, the wages are very low relative to Europe. And so the European elites are saying, well, to play in this game, you, you, you need to have low wages. I mean, how do you answer that? Well, that's right. But if low wages were the condition for a, gu a good economy, Sri Lanka would be the best economy in the world, or Mozambique would be the best economies in the, in the world. And of course, we know that's not true. We need to have uh, um, competitive capacities of the economy. We need to have innovation. We, we need to have social capabilities. We need to have uh, uh, social systems which, which are based on democracy. And uh, if uh, the, the dream of liberalism would be an author authoritarian system with no rights at all, that would, would mean no democracy as well. So uh, what we need is to develop new uh, uh, capable economies with the project of full employment, which cooperate in the world and uh, which are able to construct different advantages and different capabilities. Uh, and it, it, of course, it's not possible for Portugal to produce uh, shoes as uh, China will do. Um, but uh, China does not produce machine tools as Germany does. Perhaps in the future it will be able to balance the economy and different countries will be able to balance the economy. But uh, the combination of different uh, developments is possible in a world with uh, employment and with the rights for the people. The idea of destructing the contracts it's the idea of getting back the civilization to the dark ages of uh, the 19th century in, in Europe or whatever in, in the United States. And that's not a way of, of progress of, uh, or of uh, accepting a common standard of life uh, for the common people. Can Europe maintain this social contract when obviously China has uh, nothing really resembling it? And the United States social contract is, was not so strong to begin with, and it's also unraveling, and as I said, wages are going down. But can Europe maintain the social contract in that world? Well, uh, things must, must, must change. Of course, uh, China itself will change. If you see how rapidly uh, the workers in China are demanding democratic rights and uh, new wages. They will not live forever with wages of $100 for uh, high standard production. So there will be changes in China as well and they are most welcome uh, because they are very important for the world as such. There will be changes in Germany. There is a, a strike this week in Germany for a rise in wages of 6%. And um, we'll see what happens after that. But of course, if the wages in Germany uh, increase, so the, the internal demand will increase, uh, possibilities of export for countries such as, such as France or Portugal or Greece will be best possibilities. So uh, this sort of changes should be seen in a very dynamic system of people engaged all over the world in a better economy for, for jobs. 
uh, and if that's possible, the answer for those who say that uh, you should lower the, the wages because in China is so, or because in the United States is so, is just that we need to have um, common uh, trends of development all over the world. And of course, we cannot um, give up uh, such uh, ways of living, such as the national health system, which provides uh, health care for different people um, independently if they are rich or, or poor, or um, the, a, a good public university for all those uh, able and willing to attend uh, the university. All that must be seen as part of the democracy and part of our uh, common way of living. So that's a fight for responsibility and a fight for democracy. And what, what is the state of that fight? In, in Portugal and Spain, general strikes, uh, how, how much popular support do the general strikes have? And in terms of, uh, is there any force emerging at the political level, like electorally, that might contend for power with a different vision? Well, I hope that will happen. Uh, the public support for the strikes changes very quickly. It was very large in Portugal and indeed, although the wages are so low and unemployment is so threatening, um, um, transports, uh, the transport system, railways and underground was totally paralyzed. A lot of public services and, well, very many people um, supported and participated in the strike. We'll see in Spain. Um, but what, what's happening is that, uh, well, people tend to understand that if they don't fight together uh, for their rights, they will uh, face a brutal attack by these governments. Now, uh, the Portuguese government was elected less than one year ago, so there are no close elections, and the Spanish election, as, uh, as you know, was uh, uh, one month ago, uh, one month and a half. Uh, so there will be no elections in Spain unless there is a political crisis and we'll see in the future. Uh, but uh, there are some new changes, mostly because of the participation of young movements, uh, many of them inspired by the Occupy movement in the United States, um, many remembering the alt alternative globalization movement, the movements against the war in Iraq, uh, different social movements against uh, liberal policies, uh, very well-rooted uh, popular movements for the national health uh, system. All they combine in different forms, uh, claiming for new thought in the political arena, uh, in the political uh, stance. So uh, I believe uh, this is a period of uh, quick change and dramatic change. All right, thanks very much for joining us, Francisco. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.